I'm Paul Gibbons, captain of the Atlantic Teak. I'll be towing the barges Atlantic Marlin and Atlantic Swordfish. And along with the Atlantic Beach, we'll be towing the Atlantic Tuna and the Atlantic Elm, we'll be towing this, the Atlantic Sea Lion. Our part this year will be uh, towing two barges, a tandem tow, from St. John, right into here, out to Bay of Fundy, up the Atlantic coast, into the Strait of Canso into Mulgrave, where we get our second barge, and then from Mulgrave, we're going to go out onto the Cabot Strait, Gulf of St. Lawrence, into the St. Lawrence River, up to uh, Bay Concor. We'll load there, approximately three days loading, and then we'll depart from Bacon Corps with the two barges, back down through the St. Lawrence, out to the Gulf of St. Lawrence, into the Strait of Belle Isle. So as we continue on up the Labrador coast, up to the top, Cape Chidley, and into the Hudson Strait, through Hudson Strait, and into Hudson Bay, and at the top of Hudson Bay, over right over to the western side of Hudson Bay where we enter uh, Chesterfield Inlet, which leads us to Baker Lake, which is 170 miles inland. In preparation before departing St. John for the north, there's a uh, there, there's numerous things that have to uh, have to be done. Uh, you have your annual inspections through Transport Canada and, and Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London. There's also a lot of engine work that with maintenance that, can, that is done, just to make sure that everything is 100%. You know, because of the uh, the voyage up there, so we've got so much to do. It's uh, there's deck side and there's a. Uh, like I say, engine room, there's food provisions that have to be thought out and stored. Um, there's all our, uh, our painting supplies. Uh, then the barge has to be ready. We have to get make sure that everything's good on the barge or barges that we'll be towing two barges. So we have all that to do. There's, you know, right from our tow winch, you know, maintenance on a tow winch or to uh, if our tow wires need to be turned in for end or inspected. It's all, uh, it takes a lot of time and, uh, and a lot of people and we're working, you know, we're, we're putting in a lot of hours each day to get ready for this because when we leave here, we're, we're on our own. We're basically on our own. I have a experienced crew for the, for the most part for this voyage. Uh, we have maybe one, one new guy on deck, but my first my first mate is an experienced man. He's been with me for several years. My chief engineer has uh, been with me for quite a while too, and he's also well experienced. And but and all the other fellows are all good guys. They're all they all know previous to what they're they're you know what they're getting into. Some of them have been up there before. Uh, some of them are you know real keen to go that haven't been. So there there's a bit of excitement there, and uh, you know they 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 do a great job for me. You know they're. I'm nothing without them. My biggest concern is the uh, the health and safety and welfare of the crew. Uh, you know, we're all prepared for emergencies. We've all been trained. Uh, we have our scheduled drills. And, but with all that said, we still have to have due diligence each day to make sure that everything is the way it should be. So that in, in the times of, especially of adverse weather, you know, we're, we're ready for anything because if things go bad, it's usually when the weather is bad and one thing usually, you know, just sort of uh, 
waterfalls off to another thing, another problem. So, but if you can keep up on these things every day, as the voyage goes along, it makes life a lot easier, and you're ready for it. The drills are carried out on the voyage at different times. So, because in, a, in an emergency, fire or abandoned ship knows no time. So, everybody is uh, is ready for this. Tugs arrive with the barges, they'll discharge the barges that they have, and then they will go down to an area called Cross Bay at Helicopter Island, and the ships will, there will be a ship there, and we'll take from the ship and put on the barges and take it back into the lake. This is because the ship is not able to get into the lake because of the narrow passage and shoal waters, so that's why we're using tug and barges. And that goes for about four days. The ship will leave, return to Quebec, and reload and come back and that, will, that round trip for them will be about 18 days and then it all starts over again. And you usually get about five, five of these ships a season right, rain, running from the uh, latter part of July right up until the middle of October. Our customer, you know, expects uh, reliability and uh, to be on time and we assist them in any way. They have a small shore gang that discharge the barge, but our crew will uh, assist in, in any way they can for removing the cargo, discharging the cargo from the barge. And we've had good reviews for the last, this will be our fourth year working with the Gagne, and we've had good reviews from them each year. Uh, there has been improvements, of course, every year there's meetings. There's uh, meetings after each season and there's kickoff meetings before each season and there's been points on each side that's been discussed and uh, things have been improved. So we have a good working relationship with the Gagne and they're, they're very cooperative with us. They help us in any way because they've been in the north a long time and they know what it's like to work in remote locations. So anything that we need they can assist us in getting it. Baker Lake itself is uh, you're well above the tree line. The uh, the land the land itself is uh, is all tundra covered with about uh, you know six to eight inches of moss. Uh, it's if if you're to walk walk on the tundra, you walk over one hill and you think you you know you can see the next, but it's just a just rolling hills all the way across. It's uh, it's quite vast. There's uh, there's uh, as far as wildlife. Um, when we're up there that far north at that time of year, there is no polar bears uh, or wolves. There's, uh, you know, you have the uh, caribou migration. There's, you know, several Arctic hares and, and things like that. But the, uh, the most abundance of everything is black flies. It's, uh, there's nothing that you've seen in your life up there. It's, it's really something to have the people that, uh, you know, to come from St. John and, and to go all the way to the Arctic. You know, a local company here in St. John, Atlantic Towing. And, you know, the, the, some of the people that I have on board, when they're, they're from everywhere. Not everybody is from St. John. They're from um, a lot of the mar a lot of, from different parts of the Maritimes. So, and uh, when you get up there, if you're speaking to anybody locally or anything, they always ask, you know, where, where are you from? Um, because you know they're interested to uh, you know what's it like because a lot of the people that live there have, have not left Baker Lake. Uh, a lot of them do go to other communities or even their closest place would be go to, to uh, Winnipeg. So it's uh, you know it's something for them and they always like to see the tugs and the barges coming. Um, it's uh, it, it's a it's a good thing for them. 
it, it brings in business to the community. We bring in we bring in business to them because we buy supplies there from to the local from the local businesses. So it's a uh, it's good all around. So we have a good uh, rapport with the community itself. We've actually done a, a small job for them last year, assisted them in with putting in a new water line with one of our barges, and uh, you know it's, it was a, it was a good thing for us to do there.